Dwayne, clearly you're a superstar athlete, but you are a luxury lifestyle brand. Like here we are, I'm wearing your new Hublot watch. This is a $19,000 watch. <laughs> How do you go from being a kid who plays basketball to a two luxury icon? You say it like that, it sounds like I'm important. <laughs> I have no idea, you know, just being um, a kid and just having a dream of, of playing basketball. And basketball took me to other places and it's introduced me to other things in life. And, and my passion is the game of basketball, 100%, but I also have other passions as well. And I have an opportunity to dib and dab in those passions. For me, it was like, I want more um, creative input you know, in everything that I'm doing. And I've been able to team up with the right brands that it has allowed me to be able to do that. So when it comes to the watches, I want to go more luxury. So let's sit down and talk about what that what that band looks like. Let's, just, let's sit down and talk about what the, the face of it is going to look like and, and how I want my signature or my logo placed and just all these little things. So it's just a, a cool process. When you talk about the decisions you've made in terms of style, Many athletes spend a lot of time in China because it's a big market, but your shoes, for example, to not have a classic shoe deal like we see so many other basketball players do, why make a Chinese partnership? Well, for me, um, you know, I, I had um, Nike um, had bought Converse when I was with Converse, and then I went to Jordan. I was with that family for nine years, and it was an amazing relationship. And I was at a point in my life when I was, I was turning 30, and I was like, you know what? I want to do something that leaves a legacy. How can I build my own legacy for my kids? And for me, it was like, you know what? I want to go I don't off know, and do something. Kevin Durant's shoe deal, that's a lot of money. That's, that's a, a legacy. Lot of money. That that's is. a legacy. Well, I wasn't getting that money. <laughs> that's a legacy. Not at 30. Not at 30. Yeah, it's a different kind of legacy. Um, so like at 30, how do I build? Now how do I start and build this legacy? Um, and for me, it was more so of just looking at the bigger picture um, of my brand. It wasn't about the shoe deal. Um, it wasn't about the, the actual contract. It was about what I can build, you know, with my brand growing globally and how that opens up so many doors and windows um, for me. What is it about the style of basketball? When I see you after a game or other players, you are turning it out. That is not <laughs> the case <laughs> in baseball. That is certainly not the place in hockey. <laughs> basketball players, star basketball players, they don't bring the heat just on the court for a press conference. You are delivering. What is it about this game? It's, a, it's the competitive nature of, you know, so when, when David Stern implemented the, the dress code, you know, years ago, it became now the another. Dress the dress code. The dress code, heard around the world. Um, it became a competitive thing for guys, you know. Like we used to just wear, everybody used to wear the same things when I first got in the league. Then it became competitive, like, oh, I see what this guy's wearing. Let me step my game up. And then it went from there to, I'm going to get a stylist. And then it went from there, you know, so it's just being competitive. And then at the same time, we in the right space and the right time for men's fashion. It just so happened that it met up at the same time. And now we're respected and we're accepted into the fashion world, which eh, athletes haven't really been because we're looked at as being lanky and too long and can't, <laughs> no style, no flair, and we've been able to now, you know, kind of open those doors. <laughs> what do you want to do in your next chapter? How long do you want to be playing for Miami? Um, I don't know, as long as my body allows me to play the game the way that I want to play it. And, um, you know, each year is different. You know, every year is different. I, it's crazy because at 33 going on 34, I feel better than I did at 30 and 31. Why? My body is just, uh, I'm not hurting as much, you know. Do you treat I, your body different now? Way different. How? I'll spend more time on my body than I do on my game. When I was younger, I spent more time on my game than I did on my body. What does Kobe Bryant's retirement mean to you? It makes you a little scary because you know you're the next era up, you know? Like Kobe's the, as he said in his press conference, he's the triple OG. And guys like myself, Brian, in that 2003 class, we're the OGs of the league. So we're the older guys, you know? And it's like, oh, we're the next ones up, you know, after the Kobe's and the Tim Duncan's and the Dirks, you know, retire. So it's kind of scary from that point, but from a sense of a guy's career, someone I admired, um, someone who was a role model to me um, as a player, uh, someone I could call a friend, uh, his career was <laughs> amazing. What do you want to do next? I mean, style is so important to you. Do you want to just take that in a bigger way in terms of your lifestyle branding? I want to be a renaissance man. I want to do it all. <laughs> so everything I do at this point, you know, if it's not, if I'm not owning it, I don't want to be a part of it. <laughs> And um, I've made it very clear that, you know, when it comes to the game of basketball, one day, don't know when that day is, um, but one day I would love to have that ownership for sure. At the end of last season, you didn't go on vacation, you didn't take a break. You went and enrolled in a class at Harvard Business School. <laughs> Why? I want to be educated in the fields that I want to go in. So for me to be able to go and talk about business and 
uh, and marketing and and you know and all these things it was it was great for me to go in and be in a room full of people who, from different walks of life from different companies that has probably the same amount of money or more than I have and to be able to pick their brains to be able to give them a perspective from an athlete standpoint as the talent now but also to hear from another side too as well of how they think about um, equity how they think about um, talent how they think about uh, marketing and all these different things so I just wanted to you know kind of stimulate my brain on the other side and how other people think and why do so many athletes end up broke getting taken advantage of going from being stars who make so much money to losing it all why does that happen well one of the toughest things is is you know when guys come into the NBA most guys are similar in this sense they come from broken broken backgrounds you come from broken backgrounds you're not used to handling money you know you don't have nobody in your family that has taught you have sat down and taught you how to really value and handle money now you say how can a guy lose millions of dollars well when you come in from when you come from nothing and you you're, you're thrown into a lot what are you going to do you're going to enjoy that lot you're going to spend it um, and if you don't have no one to grab you or grab a hold of you and and help you um, learn about your money learn how to invest your money learn how to save your money it goes fast it's a fast lifestyle 